Here's a weird thought. Every time you wear a helmet, you're trusting a bowl of foam and plastic with your brain, not your reflexes, not your luck. Just that oddly shaped shell sitting on your head. It doesn't look heroic, it doesn't feel powerful, and yet, when things go wrong, it's the one thing that decides whether you walk away or wake up in a hospital. But this humble lifesaver isn't as simple as it looks. Every curve, every layer, every glossy finish hides a design built to outsmart physics itself. It has to survive crashes, absorb chaos, and still look cool enough that you'll actually wear it. So how do they make something so light do something so heavy duty? Today, we'll find out. How are helmets made? Right here on History of Simple Things. Before the sleek helmets of today, protection looked a lot more metallic. Ancient Greek hoplites wore bronze helmets shaped like oversized teapots. Medieval knights sealed themselves inside steel buckets that doubled as echo chambers. Even early firefighters wore leather caps soaked in resin, better than nothing but barely. The concept was clear. The head must survive. The methods? Not so much. Everything before the 20th century focused on deflecting impact, not absorbing it. Helmets were built to be hard because hard felt safe. The irony? A hard shell transfers the force straight to your skull. It took centuries and a few cracked heads before we realize that what really saves you isn't hardness, it's cushioning. Fast forward to the early 1900s. Motorcycles were roaring into popularity, bicycles were zipping through cities, and sports were getting faster and rougher. Enter the first modern helmet, a leather cap stuffed with cork. Not elegant, but revolutionary. It could compress under impact, soaking up some of the energy before your brain did. By the 1950s, material science joined the fight. Engineers discovered expanded polystyrene, EPS foam, the same material in coffee cup lids, but fine-tuned to handle serious impacts. Suddenly, helmets could be lightweight, strong, and actually comfortable. This discovery didn't just improve helmets, it redefined them. At the heart of every helmet is that familiar chalky-looking layer, EPS foam. It's not chosen by accident. This foam is filled with millions of tiny air pockets, each one acting like a miniature shock absorber. When your head hits something, those bubbles crush and collapse, converting lethal kinetic energy into harmless deformation. In short, it sacrifices itself to save you. To make it, manufacturers use small beads of pre-expanded polystyrene. They're heated with steam inside a mold that's shaped like, well, half your head. The heat fuses them together into a dense yet airy form that perfectly fits the outer shell. The result? A single piece of foam engineered to crumple just right. Then comes the shell, the shiny outer layer that makes a helmet look smooth, aerodynamic, and professional instead of like a foam castle. Most modern helmets use polycarbonate or fiberglass reinforced composites. Polycarbonate is the everyday hero. Tough, flexible, and affordable. Fiberglass, on the other hand, is for the pros. Lighter, stiffer, and capable of distributing impact across the entire surface. These shells are either injected into molds or laid up by hand, depending on the helmet type. Motorcycle helmets, for instance, often start as sheets of fiberglass fabric, layered in resin, shaped by pressure and heat, then trimmed and sanded until every curve fits perfectly. When bonded with the foam liner, you get a two-layer system that behaves like a duet. One absorbs, the other deflects. Of course, no one wants to wear something that feels like a rock. That's why the inside of a helmet looks more like a cozy pillow fort than safety gear. There's comfort padding, made from soft, 
sweat-wicking fabric, wrapped around impact foam, carefully glued or snapped into place. These pads are removable and washable, but more importantly, they fine-tune the fit. A helmet that doesn't fit snugly is basically decoration. Even a small gap means the helmet might twist or slip on impact, turning protection into a gamble. So the padding isn't just for comfort, it's part of the science. Then there's the most underrated part of the helmet, the strap. It's the only thing stopping your safety device from flying off during a crash. High-strength nylon webbing is threaded through anchor points built into the shell, then secured with quick-release buckles or D-rings. Simple, yes, but crucial. Before any helmet hits the market, these straps are tested for tensile strength. They're yanked, twisted, and pulled to ensure they won't snap even under violent force. Because the best helmet in the world won't matter if it doesn't stay on your head. Once the science is done, the art begins. Helmets are painted, polished, and decorated, partly for branding but also for visibility. Bright colors and reflective coatings aren't just for style. They make riders stand out in low light. Some high-end helmets even include UV-resistant clear coats to prevent fading or cracking under sunlight. In factories, robotic arms spray paint in perfectly even layers. Then human hands take over, applying decals, logos, and final touches. The glossy finish we see on store shelves hides thousands of tiny engineering decisions underneath. No helmet escapes the lab untested. Each one goes through brutal trials that simulate real-world crashes. They're dropped onto steel anvils from specific heights, blasted with sharp impacts, crushed, and even exposed to extreme temperatures. Sensors measure how much energy reaches the head form inside. If that number exceeds a certain threshold, the helmet fails. Certification standards like DOT, ECE, or SNELL ensure helmets meet strict safety benchmarks. A DOT-approved motorcycle helmet, for instance, must absorb impact forces below 400 Gs. That means if your head hits the ground, your brain experiences less than a third of what it would without a helmet. It's not invincibility, but it's enough to turn death into a concussion and a concussion into a story you can still tell. Today, helmets are smarter than ever. Engineers are experimenting with multi-directional impact systems or MIPS that let the helmet's interior rotate slightly during angled crashes, reducing rotational brain injuries. Others use carbon fiber shells and 3D printed liners for a fit so precise it feels custom made. There are even helmets with built-in sensors that alert emergency services if you crash and airbag helmets that inflate around your head before impact. The goal hasn't changed since the Bronze Age, keep the skull intact, but the methods have evolved from blacksmithing to biomechanics. So the next time you clip on a helmet, remember, you're wearing centuries of trial, error, and innovation, all condensed into one surprisingly elegant object. It's not just foam and plastic, it's physics, chemistry, design, and a quiet promise that when life throws chaos your way, something's ready to take the hit for you. And that's how a helmet is made, layer by layer, molecule by molecule, and sometimes life by life. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.